Welcome back everybody, it's Batjack JW and we're doing a video on when I buy a used revolver or I'm looking at a revolver, some of the things that I can check. Uh, these are just some basic checks, they're not everything that you could check, but these are some basic ones that you can check. You might be on the fly at a gun show or a gun shop, so these kind of are somewhat limited because you may not be able to do all of these or just start to totally probing around but anyway hopefully this helps uh, first of all right there on a the cylinder one thing I check is the uh, lead in to lead in that turn ring right there which is inherent from a revolver which happens from the uh, hand that uh, the stop hand on the bottom of the frame that drags across the cylinder now this could indicate a couple of things that it could be a, that it was open and closed a lot or just uh, simply shot a lot now the other thing too to look at while you're in this area is look at these uh, areas here where the uh, the stop hand locks up into the cylinder the lock up areas and see if there are any, uh, any of them are dogged up or chewed up that could be the indication that somebody was spinning the cylinder and slamming it shut one of the other places I check is right here where the uh, cylinder crane meets up with the frame it should be fairly uh, close in like this and smooth you can feel it it's uh, really no space in there uh, if there is any kind of dramatic space in this area it could mean that the crane might be bent it never does hurt to check the condition of the firing pin nose right here on the hammer if it is a hammer mounted firing pin so they're always good to check that check and make sure that it's in good condition none of the uh, the um, I believe this is like a uh, rivet here that's not damaged or anything or it might be coming loose or any stress fractures around the uh, nose of the firing pin check your sights um, always good you know look to check the sights make sure they're uh, you're on tight they haven't been uh, messed with or anything also on the front sight uh, if if it does have one of those orange inserts uh, it, this one does not but if it does is it missing as we come around into the inside of the uh, frame here where the forcing cone is, this is known as the forcing cone, which is the end of the barrel sticking out into the frame. What kind of condition that is, that is important to me because I want to know, make sure there's no uh, fractures or anything are in there. Uh, it's not chewed up like it's had a steady diet of some pretty uh, hot loads or anything like that. Also, while you're there, check the uh, top strap here. If there's any kind of heavy duty, uh, you know, damage to that area, you know, caused by the excessive pressure of the rounds or just longevity of using a revolver. Coming around down here, that uh, stop hand that we were talking about, right in here, checking that condition on that. How's the uh, tension on the spring by pushing down on it, making sure that it's in good shape. If there's any side to side play in it, you know, of course that, that could also be damaged in case that somebody was uh, cowboying the gun a little bit, like I said, spinning the cylinder, slamming it shut. Another place I like to look is inside the frame here. I like to look at, uh, I guess, what uh, Bob Dunlap would call the donut there. Uh, if there's a lot of wear and tear on that, it usually indicates the gun's been shot a lot. This one looks like it's been opened and closed a lot more than maybe perhaps shot. But also, this area here is important to look at. Now, I'm going to pull back on the cylinder release latch. And pulling back on that... Uh, exposes the hole where the uh, lockups uh, for the cylinder lives and what I'm looking for is seeing that if it's in decent shape it's not got gouges out of it now gouges could be caused by basically somebody that had not decided to push the cylinder release latch all the way forward before popping the cylinder open now we'll go ahead and turn around and show you what I mean by pushing this completely forward to open up that cylinder release there and then uh, cause it, you know, just not getting it all the way out there and overriding it a little bit and damaging the frame. You can get that by opening it up and pulling down on that to open it up there. Now, obvious check would be the bore. Sorry to give you the business end of it, but uh, anyway, obviously check the bore. You can also get a little bit better of a view of there if you might fold up a little piece of paper, maybe you have a receipt or something in your pocket, and you can fold that up and stick it down in the back area and it would light it up so you can see inside the bore. Gonna throw it out there, although most places you're, they're not gonna let you do it, uh, but some will. Pop the grips off, check out the frame, see how they're looking. Well, what time is it? Let's check the timing. Uh, you can check the timing by, you can put a light drag on the cylinder or the uh, 
the uh, rejection rod here just to kind of light pressure not a lot and slowly cock the hammer and see if the cylinder locks up yep and it does and you can usually do that to all six and it'll tell you if it's locked up or not so and that's the way you can check timing just a quick and dirty way but like I said all these checks are just kind of minor things that you can do um, just you know without kind of going too crazy and too ham you can really kind of check a lot of these without uh, causing too much uh, insult to injury with the, uh, the part you know the seller or anything like that also the ejection rod right here if it is silver and where all the bluing is worn off that's like another good indication the revolver's been heavily used so anyway hopefully these tips help you like I said there's a million other things you can do but you gotta kind of think you're kind of you know checking somebody's product out that they're trying to sell you you know you got to kind of take that in consideration.